very good morning my dear students i hope everybody is uh, doing great so let's uh, continue the chapter called motion in a plane all right so let me start writing here it is motion in a plane all right so in this motion in a plane last class we have discussed just the basics of vectors especially resolution of vectors my dear students so resolution of vector we have discussed then we have continued to the topic called introduction of motion in a plane in the introduction we have discussed about position vector right which was delta r bar instantaneous velocity vector instantaneous acceleration vector and few numericals we have done now in today's session listen to me carefully my dear students we have our kinematic equations we know about this right we have our kinematic equations this kinematic equations will be used when a body is moving with a constant acceleration so that you know right when a body is moving with a constant acceleration only you can use this kinematic equations otherwise they will be invalid all right now look at the interesting thing here in two dimensional motion how these equations of motions will be used so that's what the aim of today's session in two dimensional motion how the kinematic equations will be utilized ready after that we will be learning about projectile motion what is that projectile motion in between this projectile motion and the kinematic shin in two dimension so there is a topic actually so that is called a relative velocity in two dimension what is that relative velocity in two dimension okay so relative velocity in one dimension we have discussed i hope you remember those things even when two bodies are moving in the same directions with some velocity this is ba and this is bb so relative velocity of a with respect to b will be a va minus bb and when two bodies are moving in opposite direction so the relative velocity of a with respect to b is b a plus b b so this is the basic thing about relative velocity in one dimension so relative velocity in two dimensions is a very important topic that we will be learning in the later classes because you must be strong in the concept called vectors so let's please be strong and confident about vectors a topic then we'll discuss the relative velocity concept in two dimension then it will be very much useful and 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 you will understand it more better okay now let's see my dear students just a second let's see my dear students here uh, let me change color here okay kinematics in equations of motion kinematic equations of motion so you can see here we have a v is equal to u plus at s is equal to a ut plus half at square a v square minus u square is equal to 2 ax and one more thing i'll tell you displacement is equal to average velocity into t 
when the body is moving with the constant acceleration okay so this will be the u plus v by 2 into t okay clear so these are the equations of motion and these equations of motion in two dimension can be written in this way see here v bar is equal to the u bar plus a bar into t so then s bar s bar is what so displacement that is important displacement which is equal to u bar into t plus half into a bar into t square okay now v square minus u square is equal to 2 as can be written as v bar v bar minus u bar u bar which is equal to 2 into a bar dot s bar okay so then this displacement can be written as u bar plus v bar by 2 into t okay from these equations this is the very important two equations where you can expect some numericals also in your neat exam my dear children where you can expect some numericals also okay what is that see here v bar means what v bar is equal to v x i cap plus v y j cap if there is z axis also it can be written as plus v z j k cap same way what is u bar here initial velocity there is x component for initial velocity there is a y component for initial velocity right so what is the acceleration acceleration is equal to x component of acceleration and y component of acceleration will be like that and s bar s bar is what s bar is the displacement final position of the body minus initial position of the body uh, which is equal to this one u bar t plus half a bar t square okay so this u bar t plus half a bar t square okay clear so now let's remember this equation Now, just a So how the questions will be asked based on this? That's it. The so simple thing is how the questions will be asked. We'll see. And let's see this given example. Given example, a velocity and accelerations are given at time t is equal to zero given velocities are u bar is equal to 2 i cap plus 3 j cap meter per second and acceleration values are given like this 4 i cap plus 2 j cap it's meter per second square so these two values are given now the question is find the magnitude of velocity and sorry find find velocity and displacement of particle at t is equal to 2 seconds 
clear so generally velocity of a particle at 2 seconds how we will find out by using in one dimension it was found by using like this p is equal to u plus here also the same thing so here it is v bar is equal to u bar plus a bar into t same thing what is v bar so v bar only we need to find out u bar what is the initial velocity here it's clearly given 2 i cap plus 3 j cap plus a bar into t so t is 2 seconds understand so this is a bar 4 i cap plus 2 j cap into 2 so what i can write here 2 i cap plus so this 4 i cap into 2 so this is see from here i'm talking about 4 i cap into 2 that is 8 understand so 8 i cap clear plus it's 3 j cap is here so 3 j cap plus so what is that 2 into 2 4 j cap so that is the answer so what you can write v bar is equal to so 2 i plus 8 i it's 10 i cap plus so 3 j plus 4 j it is 7 j cap if you want to find the magnitude you can find right if you want the magnitude you can find v is equal to square root v x square plus v square y square find the magnitude if you want but the question is only about find the velocity and displacement at t is equal to 2 seconds so displacement so displacement we have the formula so x2 bar minus x1 bar which is equal to u bar into t plus a half a bar into t square so this complete value is displacement this is final position this is initial position okay so now displacement let me write s bar s bar is equal to u bar u bar into t 2 i cap plus 3 j cap into t value is 2 plus half into a cap what is a cap 4 i cap plus 2 j cap into t square t square is 2 square it's 4 okay now 2 2 what i can write as bar 2 i cap into 2 it's 4 i cap plus already 4 i cap is here into 2 so that is 8 i cap all 8 i, I cap terms i'm writing at one side so what at one place because it is easy to calculate easy to add later so this is 3 j cap into 2 it's a 6 j cap plus here how much 2 j cap into 2 it's 4 j cap okay so 12 i cap plus 10 j cap understand so this is the displacement after some time and this is velocity after some time here also if you want you can find the magnitude but they have not passed okay so in this way questions will be asked my dear students so you need to practice from your end right how you need to practice from your end i told you right so most of the time these two questions are based on these two formulas only questions will be asked so how you need to pro practice here is you just change the different values however you like this value and this value okay so now can find out sometimes the questions will question will be asked my dear students look at here they'll give everything time they will give acceleration they'll give time they'll give initial velocity they'll give and the initial position also they'll give you need to find the final position okay sometimes final position they'll give initial position you need to find out right by using this formula only by using this formula final position or initial positions of body can also be calculated no problem understand clear now all right my dear children and let's
fine. Now, let's see another example question. What is another example question you see here? Given, so simple, given x is equal to alpha t square and y is equal to beta t square. So, you know what are these two? These two are, right, these two are coordinates of These two are coordinates of a moving body. Coordinates of a moving body in a plane. Okay, moving body in a plane at any instant. Okay, at any instant of time t. So, this time is what? t. Okay. Now, question is find the velocity of a body. Find the velocity of a body at this instant only. We are asking. At this instant only. Right? See, how simple we will solve this question. How simple we will solve this question. Let's look at this. So, how we will solve? X is what? Position of the particle at some time. Y is what? Position of the particle at some time along Y axis. Okay. Now, velocity, if you want to find, which is instantaneous velocity, we have the formula Vx i cap plus Vy j cap. So, from this Vx, you can easily find. So dy dt of x, right? So then by so dy dt of y, so simple. So this x you substitute here, this y you take from here. So what is vx, my dear students here? d by dx of d by dt of x. What is that? So can I say it is 2 alpha t and vy is 2 beta t. So if you write in this, you get V bar is equal to 2 alpha t i cap plus 2 beta t j cap. So if you want the velocity whose magnitude will be 2 alpha t whole square plus 2 beta t whole square. Okay, so from here square root. So inside the square root only if I take common two t square, so then this will be alpha square plus beta square, my dear children. So now square root two theta whole two t whole square. If I take it out, it is two t square root alpha square plus beta square. So that's it. This is my answer. So what is this? This is the velocity of a body at that instant. These are the instantaneous positions. Okay, we are ready to take up the other question. The other question is a class work question, right? So what is this question? So the question is they gave initial velocity v naught bar is equal to minus 4 j cap meters per second and the body is moving with constant acceleration remember if a body is moving with constant acceleration only you can use the equations of motion okay so given constant acceleration value is 3 i cap plus 8 j cap meter per second square because this is the acceleration unit right now the question is simple find the velocity of of the body after simple after one second that's it so you can easily find by using v is equal to u plus at formula okay i have given the hint also so you do it this question right now my dear students so 
right now. Okay, ready to pause the video and do this question and send it to me. So let's move to the another example. So another example, this is also the classwork, but I'll give you the hint, all right? So hint, capitalism. So what is the given question? Given question is like that. So they gave velocity to I cap plus 4j cap meter per second, okay? At t is equal to zero. So that means initially, so the body is moving with this velocity at t is equal to zero. Now, it is moving with a constant acceleration, which is I cap minus 3j cap a meter per second square my students. Okay, this is acceleration. Now, with this acceleration, the body is moving for four seconds. The body is moving for how much time? For four seconds. Then, right, find, carefully see, then find the coordinates of the body. Then find the coordinates of the body. And find the coordinates of the body if it is at the origin, if it is at origin at time t is equal to c. So simple, right? The concept is so simple here. All right, so simple. So hint I'm giving you hint I'm giving you look. So velocity they give, right? I can say at t is equal to zero means initial velocity and acceleration also they give, and it is moving for four seconds. So you need to find its coordinates of the body, right? So coordinates of the body, x comma y you need to find. Okay, x comma. So X is what horizontal distance traveled by the body or horizontal displacement taken by the body. So we have the formula S is equal to UP plus half AP square in terms of vector. See here, horizontal distance traveled or horizontal displacement SX bar, which is equal to UX bar into T plus half into AX bar into T square. Simple. So yes, y bar is equal to u y bar into t plus half into a y bar into t square. So you, you see your v bar, it is written, it can be written in the form of v x i cap plus v y j cap. So then if you see your a bar, that can be written as a x i cap plus a y j cap, my dear children. All right. So this is your Vx, Vy. This is your Ax, Ax is one, okay, Ay is minus three. Ay is how much? Minus three. So you know this and you substitute here, Ux, so this is Ux, right? So this is Uy or Vy, anything. So initial velocity they gave in terms of V only, low coefficients. So substitute Ux, Uy, Ax, Ay, and you get two positions. Those are those are the positions. So this is what I can say my x, and this is I can say my y. All right. So for your reference, I'm giving you. You will get the coordinate sixteen comma minus eight. So this will be the answer. And let's check whether you get it or not. All right, my dear children, and there are so many questions will be waiting for you in your assignment. Now we'll move on to the next topic called I, I told you before moving to the next relative velocity in two dimensions. We need to learn actually, but you must be perfect at vectors concept. So that's the reason. So we will be learning your relative velocity in two dimension in later chapters, uh, in, in later concepts of this chapter. Now, let's see. 
there is a chapter there is a topic called so there is a topic called projectile motion till now we have discussed about horizontal motion of the body that means rectilinear motion so from the origin body is might be moving along positive x axis or negative x axis so from the origin so body is may be moving along negative y axis or positive y axis this is called the rectilinear motion then what is this projectile motion here what is this projectile motion let's see this is the ground from the ground uh, there is a body is projected in this way carefully see there is a body is projected in this way this is called origin from the origin you have your positive x axis and you have your positive y axis y axis and x axis what is the angle at which we throw the body what is the angle at which we throw the body you can see so this is the angle i throw the body theta my theta is not c See here. This is theta. So, what is the angle here? It is theta. Carefully. With some velocity u, we throw the body, and the body is moving in this. So, this is the body called. This is the motion of the body is called projectile motion. So, exactly speaking, and this projectile motion is called oblique projectile. Oblique projectile. Because it's making some angle theta, its its initial velocity is making some angle theta with x axis, and it's called oblique projectile. Imagine this theta is 90 degrees, right? So theta is what angle made by velocity of the particle with x axis, right? So this is the x axis. So theta means you must project the body like this. Understand? So this is your initial. Velocity. So what is the angle here? 90 degrees. This will not become a projectile motion. What happens? In this case, the body will be moving in a straight line and final velocity will be zero and it's come back to the ground. So where is the concept of projectile motion? If this mm, theta value is zero degrees, for example, if this theta value is zero degrees, for example, so this is x axis, so this is y axis, theta zero means the body is thrown in this way with some initial value. So this is also straight line motion only, right? Rectilinear motion. This is also not a projectile motion. So if your theta is not equal to 90 and not equal to 0 and not equal to 180 degrees, other than these three angles, at any angle you throw the body from the ground. So that's called a projectile motion. What is that called? Projectile motion. Is it simple? Is it simple? Projectile motion is the motion of a body which is projected at an angle other than 90, 0 and 180, that's called the projectile motion. So simple. Look at here. This is the height called a maximum height of a projectile. What is it called? Maximum height of a projectile. And from here to here, right? So that is called range of a projectile. What is that? So the maximum horizontal distance traveled, it's called the range. And in, and, and in detail, we'll be discussing about projectile motion in the next classes, right? 
So for time being, listen carefully. So this is the maximum height of the projectile and this is the range of the projectile. And you see, this is called the time of ascent from zero to maximum height and from maximum to the ground back that is called time of descent. And the total time is called time of flight. What is that? Time of flight, a maximum height and range of the projectile. These three things are very, very, very important, right? So those are called parameters. What is parameters? to be discussed in projectile motion. What is that? Time of flight, maximum height, and range of the projectile magistrates. Okay, all right. Now, look at the interesting thing. It is thrown up with some initial, it's thrown at an angle with some initial velocity u. And this initial velocity will have its own components, right? So this is ux and uh, this is u y because this initial velocity can be written as u x i cap plus u y j cap. What is u x? You know, any vector its x component will be equal to carefully see. So u bar is equal to u x is can I write it as u cos theta? Definitely, I can write. That is what the resolution of the vector tells you. So the component of the vector which is adjacent to theta, so that's u cos theta component, right? And u sine theta into j cap. So this is another component. So what you should understand here is, what you should understand here is, ux is equal to u cos theta and uy is equal to u sine theta. Clear? And listen one more important thing. This u cos theta is there, right? At any instant of projectile motion, this u cos theta value is constant. Remember, at any instant you take, the u cos theta will be constant. u sin theta will be changes at any instant you see u sine theta will be changes why i tell you this at this instant for example at this instant right so let's take uh, right at this instant the particle is at a point p right so this point p can be having coordinates x comma y carefully so its velocity can be represented with the V, that's an instantaneous velocity. That's what instantaneous velocity we could represent with the tangent. Okay, that's what the tangent I have drawn. So this V will also have two components. This is Vx and this is Vy, my dear students. Vx and Vy, carefully see. What is this Vx? Carefully see. What is this Vx? Vx, I'm writing here at some instant, right? At an instant at an instant the particle is at point P okay so at this instant V bar is equal to uh, V X I cap plus V Y J cap Careful. what I have told you horizontal component of velocity is constant everywhere so well, let me write this vx is what vx is what at any instant vx is equal to u cos theta only horizontal component of velocity remains same why remains same i'll tell you just a minute just a minute hold on just a minute right so what is the final velocity along y direction after some time so we have the formula vy is equal to u y plus a t so what is Vy? Uy. What is Uy? Initially, Y component of velocity. What is this Uy? So is it U sine theta? And the acceleration. This is very important. As this component is always vertical, you see. 
all these this component at this instant you take so your vx will be like this vy will be like this okay so at this instant you take at this instant for example your vx will be like this and vy will be like this always so this vy vertical component of velocity at any instant is always vertical okay see always vertical so this will be affected by acceleration due to gravity okay and that is why this is i'm writing it initially i'm writing at this instant right so this is minus g into t okay so what is the final velocity at this instant final velocity vertical component of velocity at this instant is how much u sin theta minus gt y minus acceleration is my the body is thrown up in this case acceleration due to gravity is to be taken as negative okay so this is vy and this is vx now again again so this is no effect of g on this component because horizontal there's no force acting on the body horizontally okay so horizontally no force is acting on the body horizontally no force is acting on the body only vertically force is acting on the body that force is called gravitational force okay so that is why vy component is changing you can see this is changing okay so u sin theta is changing because because constant downward force acting on the body constant downward force acting on the body are you understanding so now what i can say this u cos theta value always constant u sin theta is changing at some instant velocity along x axis will be same u cos theta velocity along y axis will be u sin theta minus gt see the value is decreased initially u sin theta minus gt okay now now so at this instant at this instant what i can write so v bar is equal to a v x i cap plus a v y j cap what is v x i cap so i told you u cos theta component will never change because horizontally no force is acting on the body and v y what is v y at this instant my dear students at this instant v y is this one right so what is v y u sin theta minus gt into j cap so that is velocity at a particular instant and now now let us find at this instant this is x axis understand so this is x at this instant so this is y okay so that is this way now what is the horizontal distance traveled x is equal to u x into t plus half into a x t square okay so horizontal distance traveled is x from here to here u x what is u x u x we can we already found u cos theta so u cos theta into t plus half into what is acceleration along x axis so as x axis the velocity is constant at any point see at this point you take 
ux at this point is take ux at this point at this point also horizontal velocity will be constant which is equal to u cos theta this value so when horizontal velocity is constant horizontal acceleration will be zero understand if a body is moving with constant velocity what is acceleration it's zero so zero into t square so you get it is u cos theta into t so what i can write x is equal to u cos theta into t so from here t is equal to x by u cos theta after this time only we are finding okay at this point if at the coordinates x comma y x is the horizontal distance traveled y is the vertical distance traveled by the time the body is at this point okay so let me take x is equal to u cos theta into t as equation number 1 let's concentrate on uh, now let us concentrate on vertical motion so this is what the horizontal motion no confusion okay horizontal motion we have concentrated we have got something like this and let's concentrate on the vertical motion no confusion okay vertical motion if you concentrate vertical displacement is y right so at this point the y coordinates are y vertical displacement is y which is equal to u y into t plus half a y into t square so this i can write u y initially y component of velocity is how much this is u y understand so u y is u sin theta so many places we have written so far so it is u sin theta into t so this this calculus is plus sorry, plus half into a y value is minus g because acceleration along y axis is acceleration due to gravity into t square so what is that so y is equal to u sin theta into t minus half g t square so this is equation number Two. Okay, so what are we going to do? That's an important, and interesting thing. Let's see. So we are just we we are just moving aimless, right? So different views and different points related to the projectile motion. We have keep on doing it. We have concentrated on vertical motion. We have concentrated on horizontal motion individually. We are just doing it, and at any instant, velocity how to find, and that part also we have done. so the interesting thing i'll tell you carefully see my dear students so y is equal to the u sin theta continuation u sin theta into t so this t is what time taken by the projectile to move from here to here is yes or no time taken by the projectile to move from here to here right from here to here so what is the time taken so that we have found already here that you can So this t I'm just substituting here. So x by u cos theta. Okay, that is this t minus half into g into. So what is that? X square. That is total t square, right? X square by u square cos square theta. Okay. Now, so what I can write y is equal to. So this u u cancel, right? so this is tan theta into x minus minus half into g divided by u square cos square theta into x square okay this complete thing i'm just keeping in the brackets now if this tan theta if i write it as a so that is ax minus this complete value g by 2 u square cos square theta if i write it as b so this is b x square okay so what is that y is equal to a x minus b x square so this is the equation of what this is the equation this is the parabola equation so what is that equation parabola equation so what we have proved 
the path of a projectile only we have taken right from here to here we have taken the path of the projectile is parabola so what we have to do so what we have proved is path of a projectile path of a projectile is parabola so very very important theoretical type question right the very important derivation is also this one for your first puc board exams okay so first puc final exams now now i mean just you can you can copy it right you can just pause the video and you can copy it So what we have found here is, so y is equal to ax minus bx square. So what is this form? y is equal to tan theta into x minus g by 2u square cos square theta into x square. Okay. Now, so what was this? Just a Just a second, my dear students. See, uh, this is my x-axis and this is y-axis. So what we have discussed so far about the projectile motion is this, right? So here we thrown the body with some initial velocity u. So there is a x component of initial velocity u cos theta, y component of initial velocity is u sin theta. At this particular instant, so the particle is moving with some final velocity v at this instant. So here it is vx, here it is vy, right? So always vy component will be affected due to the acceleration due to gravity, but a vx component will always be equal to u cos theta and horizontal direction acceleration is zero. So these are the two points you remember and come back to this so you have this equation right what is this equation this is equation of a parabola what is this equation equation of a parabola according to this equation i can say it is uh, sorry equation of a projectile sorry uh, so this is equation of a projectile according to this equation we can conclude that 
So the parabola, the path of a projectile is parabola and we have concluded it. Now, what I have told you just now, there is a range of a projectile. Maximum horizontal distance traveled by the body. That's called the range from this origin. And maximum height. So this is the a maximum height of a projectile. And time of ascent and time of descent from the maximum height and to the maximum height. So time of ascent plus time of descent is equal to time of flight. These three things we'll be discussing in the next classes. What I wanted to tell you is the importance of this equation. From these two equations, you can compare your A value is what tan theta? Yes or no? Constant. Your B value is what? G by 2u square cos square theta. So from this, can I do A by B? Right, the ratio of this constant and this constant. A by B, if I write it. So A is tan theta, which is divided by 2u square, sorry. Uh, so B value is G by 2u square cos square theta. Okay, so now, This value I can write, A by B is equal to tan theta, I can write it as sine theta by cos theta, okay, into, so this denominator I can take to the numerator, that will be 2u square cos square theta divided by g, okay. So one cos theta, one cos theta is cancelled here. So A by B is equal to u square into 2 sin theta cos theta divided by g. So this I can write u square into 2 sin theta cos theta is what? Sin 2 theta divided by g. So what is this a by b? So this a by b is equal to some expression we have got. What is this expression you know? So this a by b is equal to u square sin 2 theta by g. This expression is called range of a projectile my dear students what is the expression is called range of a projectile understand so this range of a projectile expression we will be discussing in the next class but but interestingly we have got here the range of a projectile and this equation importance is that this equation importance is that so they give the example examples they give like this my dear students Let's see the examples they give like this. So look at this. the examples, how they give is so given equation of a parabola, equation of a projectile is like this. So 12 into x minus 6x squared. This is the equation of a projectile motion and find the range of a projectile. What is the range of a projectile? The maximum horizontal distance traveled by the body from here starting to the ending. So this is the maximum horizontal distance, right? How to find the range here? So this is in the form of y is equal to ax minus bx squared. So a by b, a is 12 by b is 6 and your answer is 2 meter so that's your range okay and one more way so initial velocity of the projectile is given as 20 meters per second and take g value is 10 meters per second square initial projection was 45 degrees find the range of a projectile the range of a projectile formula just now we had u square sine 2 theta by g u square it's 20 into 20 and sine 2 theta theta is 45 right sine 2 45 sine 2 into 45 sine 90 degree divided by g on 0 0 cancel and range is equal to 20 into 2 is 40 sine 90 is 140 meters it has. all right like these questions will be asked but 
our aim of the session is not at all finding the range but in the assignment you may get a question like you may get a question from here but our aim of the class is finding our and proving equation of a projectile is a parabola equation of a projectile is what parabola understand so just take your own time for your preparation and get ready for your assignment all the very best